Hey guys, I've uh, had something come in the mail which I've been quite eagerly waiting for for a couple weeks and I thought I'd show you it. So this is the control column out of a MiG-21. I'm guessing a second generation, probably a PF or a PFM. Um, the way you can tell, excuse the air conditioner noise, um, is the button arrangement. So the original um, first generation MiG-21s, like the MiG-21 F-13, um, they lacked the autopilot, so you basically had just a trim hat and one or two buttons on the side. It looked very similar to the um, MiG-19 stick, if you're familiar with that. The second generation added the two autopilot buttons, um, and the third generation moved the trim hat up slightly and added another button here uh, to control the radar to lock targets. So uh, I guess we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. When it was taken out of the aircraft, um, the stick was just kind of cut off at its wiring harness and pulled out. So these um, in the aircraft have an actual kind of big base, like a really long metal extension that's that runs basically from the bottom of the stick all the way to the floor of the aircraft. Um, that extension is also where the braking lever is attached, just slightly below the bottom of the stick. It'd be like down around where my hand's sitting. And then it kind of sticks up from there uh, in front of the stick like a big trigger. Um, this lacks that, so I don't have a braking lever on here. It's interesting to see um, the way that the wiring and such is arranged in this. There's some kind of big... Um, pair of eyelets it looks like a pivot here and i suspect that may be um because i don't know if this is how it works in the mig 21 but a lot of um aircraft you have a stick extension that runs to the floor right um that acts in pitch but it doesn't act in roll um in roll only the top portion of the stick rotates and that's for instance something you can see with the spade grip of a spitfire or a yak um, and you can see it in different modern, um, like more modern aircraft as well. I believe that's how the MiG-21 stick functions as well. And as you can see, the wiring harnesses run around that to allow for that. And there's like a, a bearing surface on the inside. So that does seem to be its purpose. Um, there's also these contacts around the bottom of the stick. Each of these has like a, a copper spring over a button. So if I press down on that, I'm not sure if the microphone's picking it up, but it does have a positive click to it. Each of these does. Um, some of the springs are broken, but they, they still work. Now, I'm not sure what those are there for. They seem to be some kind of uh, micro switch that's activated by the stick pressing against the stick base, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure what their deal is. Uh, if anyone does know, let, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear more about this. Um, I'm very much a layman when it comes to this. I've never sat in a real MiG-21. I've seen photos of the installation in the real aircraft, but I haven't seen the schematics or I haven't uh, had the time to, or the opportunity really to play with one myself in the actual um, setup as mounted in the aircraft. This is, this is the first time I've held part of a MiG-21 in my hands. So um, now I got this off eBay. Um, it came from Magnitogorsk. Um, I also found a MiG-23 stick, it was mislabeled as a 29. Um, I would have very much liked to have that, but it was about $1,100 including shipping. Uh, this was still very expensive, but it was a bit more reasonable. And um, you know, I can justify a week's pay to hold part of a MiG-21 in my hands. I can't justify like two or three weeks pay. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this. Um, I'm curious about what's hiding down in this mess down the bottom. There's a bunch of uh, lock-wired screws on there. I'm not too eager to undo those, but my original plans for the stick, um, and which I might still end up doing, are if I can do it without doing anything particularly destructive to the wiring down the bottom, I'm going to um, take the actual stick off of the base and then rewire it for use as a, a HOTAS controller. But if that's not possible, I'll just keep it as like a, a decoration or a conversation piece or whatever. Um, so we'll move up the stick. There's like this really uh, quite slick ring down here. It feels feels like it's quite well oiled or it has bearings or something. And I'm not sure what its purpose is. I think it's just like a um, some sort of collar for seating the stick. Um, if you look at the angle of the uh, those micro switches, they're actually off center. 
And the reason for that is um, in Russian aircraft, the stick is mounted with about a five degree tilt to the left so that because this is a center stick, it sits between your legs. Um, with your right hand, it makes it a bit more ergonomic to have it tilted at an angle. Whereas um, my Warthog Hotas is not canted to one side and it's, um, all, you know, I tend to kind of turn the whole stick and its base around. I, I wish you could um, rotate the stick in its mounting. I think the Verpal sticks can do that. But yeah, that's a built-in feature with this thing. Um, so if we move up onto the stick itself, this has a faded label. You probably won't be able to read the print, especially in the bad lighting in here, but I can just make it out. Um, that would normally say Spros Baka, which is uh, like release tanks or drop tanks. So that's your um, belly tank release switch. The wing tanks on the MiG-21 are activated by a separate switch on the instrument panel. Um, if you've watched me stream it, and or if you've seen the cockpit, in the MiG-21 this at least, uh, it's that one with a yellow cover with like a bomb shaped thing on it. That's actually for the wing tank release. So with this, it's on a it's under a spring loaded cover. You lift the cover, and there's a button under there. It's got quite a, a positive click when you press it in, um, which is a running theme with this. So that would punch off your belly tanks. Oops, scuffed. Got to turn my alarm off. Give me one moment. There we go. I did originally record this um, a little more prepared, but for some reason the file corrupted, so I'm just doing this totally unscripted um, and totally forgetting to turn off my phone alarm. So yeah, that's your uh, drop tank release down there. Um, as we move up the stick, we'll go to the, the pilot side first. This button um, on the MiG-21 BIS is your weapon release, so this would be what you would um, press to fire a missile or drop a bomb or something. On the second gens, I don't think that's what it does. There's no safety cover there as there is on the BIS, and there's actually a label which reads Demforovani uh, Setki PF. I'm not sure. It's something to do with a damper. Um, the set key makes me wonder if it's for the, like a, a sight cage function, but yeah, it's um, it's not covered. It doesn't click, but it does have a very stiff spring under it, so there's no questioning when it's depressed. It does squeak a bit too, like my joystick uh, pinky switch. So then we move up. As you can see, all the um, all the screws on this have this red stuff on them, which I assume is Loctite. That or it's just that they've been painted over, um, probably to stop them backing out. The big flared out cover is for the um, panic button, the SAU return to horizontal. So this is your magic button, no matter what the aircraft's doing, as long as you control the throttle and you press this button, it should return itself to straight and level flight. Um, the thing in between is the trim hat. So again, positive clicks up and down. The MiG-21 has no roll trim and no yaw trim. It just purely pitch trim. So um, this has no lateral movement. It only goes up and down. And then uh, the, the red thing here with what would have originally been loom paint, but has now faded with age. Um, this is the SAU master uh, disconnect button. So no matter what autopilot mode you have activated, if you press this button, it should cancel it and uh, return the aircraft full manual control. And they're all labeled on top, if I just turn the stick the right way um, and get the camera to focus. Hello, camera. Doesn't want to do it. So it basically says, uh, there we go, autopilot disable, um, trimmer effect, and um, return to, like activate return to horizon. Now on the front side, we have the wonderful flip down trigger, which is probably my favorite part of uh, Soviet aircraft control stick. So it does indeed work. Flip it down and it flips back up. So this acts on a button right in there. That's the actual trigger there. This is just a, an assembly to press on that, essentially a flip down lever to press on that button. Um, 
Now, the, the trigger itself is kind of rusty, uh, as you can possibly see there. Most of the sticks kind of chipped and scuffed, but in decent condition, but the trigger's a bit rusty, so that'll probably want some oiling. Um, and the button gets stuck, so I think the spring in that's gone or something is up with that. Um, if I get around to taking this stick apart, I'll probably clean it out and I'll see if I can um, sort that out, because at the moment if I depress the trigger, it gets stuck and it shouldn't, it should pop back out under uh, spring tension. But at the moment I've got to kind of manually um, disengage it from that button and reset it. But as you can see the spring on the trigger still works, so it still flips up and down. Um, on the PF, I believe that trigger fires your missiles. Um, I don't recall if the PF had an internal gun. I don't think they reintroduced that until the third generation. So the first generation MiG-21 had a pair of 30mm cannons, then reduced to one 30mm cannon. Um, and then the second gen, I believe, didn't have any internal guns. They went to uh, gun pods and missiles. Um, so yeah, I, I think that would fire missiles in a PF. Either way, um, if I do turn it into a HOTAS for the MiG-21, I am missing the, the radar lock button there, uh, the thumb button for the radar. But the way I currently have my controls bound, I use the throttle buttons on the um, on the Warthog HOTAS for the radar controls anyway. So it shouldn't be a big issue. I can just bind this to the weapon release as it would be on the BIS, um, bind the autopilot buttons as they would be on the, uh, on the actual aircraft, and we should be sweet. Um, and that also frees up a, a few other things as well. So yeah, I um, thought I'd make a video showing this. I'm pretty excited to be holding part of a MiG-21, I have to say. Um, maybe in future, in the distant future, when I have a bit more money, I might pick up a 23 stick. Um, I would very much like to have one, and I might be coming into a little bit of money, not a huge amount, but you know enough that I can actually afford some luxuries for once. Um, but that's probably not going to go towards buying aircraft parts, to be fair. Uh, I want to get over to Europe. Because I've been there for 22 years. But yeah, there you go. MiG-21, uh, probably PF, control column. If anyone um, has experience, particularly first-hand experience with the aircraft and servicing it, and has a good idea of how this thing's put together and anything I need to be aware of taking it apart to avoid damaging it um, or just weird idiosyncrasies of the control setup, I'm all ears. I would love to learn everything I can about this. By the way guys, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, who knows, maybe at some point in the future I'll be streaming at DCS MiG-21 with an actual MiG-21 stick as my hotas control. Uh, until then, catch you later.